Hello, welcome to this short presentation on Bernard Williams' theory on the pathogenesis of syringomyelia. Several theories on the pathogenesis of syringomyelia have been proposed over the last hundred years. These include inflammatory, degenerative, vascular, hydrodynamic, and so on. The prominent hydrodynamic theories of syringomyelia are those of Gardner, Bernard Williams, Boland Dyen, and Oldfield. The theories of Gardner, Boland Dyen, Oldfield are easy to conceptualize. However, Bernard Williams' theory causes some confusion because of different interpretation of his work by different authors. In this short presentation, I will try to highlight the important concepts of Bernard Williams' theory. Bernard Williams was a neurosurgeon in Birmingham, United Kingdom. While he had not held a formal academic appointment, he had done extensive and important research and particularly well known for his work on syringomyelia. He passed away at the age of 63 in 1995 following an accident while riding his motorbike. Let's first of all look at the anatomy. In this schematic diagram, you can see the cerebellum, the brainstem, the spinal cord, the subarachnoid space surrounding these structures and the arachnoid membrane. In normal individuals, the subarachnoid space of the posterior fossa freely communicates with the subarachnoid space surrounding the spinal cord. During systole, CSF flows from the intracranial compartment into the spinal subarachnoid space. This flow is reversed during diastole. During diastole, the CSF flows from the spinal arachnoid space into the cranial subarachnoid space. According to Bernard Williams, in patients with Chiari 1 malformation, there is adhesions in the arachnoid space at the craniocervical junction or there is early tonsillar herniation that acts like a one-way valve. It allows CSF to flow from the spinal subarachnoid space to the cranial subarachnoid space across the craniocervical junction. However, it impedes the flow of CSF from the cranial subarachnoid space into spinal subarachnoid space. During valsalva maneuver, straining or coughing, there is increase in the intrathoracic pressure. This pressure is transmitted to the spinal subarachnoid space through the valvous spinal epidural veins. Therefore, during valsalva maneuver, cough or straining, there is efflux of CSF from the spinal subarachnoid space into the cranial subarachnoid space across the craniocervical junction without much impediment from this one-way valve that Bernard William suggested. However, the return of the CSF from the cranial subarachnoid space into the spinal subarachnoid space is impeded by adhesions or the early descent of tonsils at the craniocervical junction. This leads to momentary increase in the intracranial pressure compared to the pressure in the spinal compartment. This in turn leads to a vector of force that pushes the tonsils further down, exacerbating the Chiari malformation. According to Bernard Williams, the decrease in pressure within the spinal subarachnoid space would cause suction on the spinal cord leading to creation of syrinx. This was the suck aspect of his theory. He also went on to propose that the sudden changes in pressures during valsalva maneuver or coughing 
would lead to extension of the syrinx. This was the slosh aspect of his theory. I would like to thank Professor Spiros Sigros for his feedback and advice during the preparation of this short presentation. I hope you have found this short presentation useful in understanding the key concepts of the theory of Bernard Williams regarding Chiari malformation and in particular syringomyelia. Thank you very much and wishing you a happy 2014.